get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See like like a beach If you find the same like right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise all right. Hey, welcome everyone. John Corkin here. I'm the host of this show. This is a live episode. It's actually a live joint episode. We're going to publish this over on Smart Business Revolution and also Dr. Weiss. Inspired show. Insider. Inspired Insider. Dr. Weiss, how are you doing this morning? We have a great show for today. That's right. This is a topic that we get asked about a lot, which is how do you get more exposure for your company, for your personal brand, for your business? Get in front of clients using podcasts and getting interviewed on more podcasts. How do you get yourself interviewed on more podcasts? And so we have a multi-part answer for that, including some of the best guest etiquette and how to make it a very successful activity, how to get on more podcasts, and how to take it even further. So we're going to hop into that in a second. But first, you know, I'm the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast. I talk with smart CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs, all kinds of different companies. Check out my archives. Check out the Inspired Insider archives as well. Jeremy, you've had P90 founders of P90X. What else? Atari, RX Bar, Big League Chew, many others. And you've had... Uh, Yeah, co-founder of Netflix. We had Activation Blizzard, LendingTree, OpenTable, Axsoftware, so many different great guests check out our archives because there's some great advice in there and we are also the co-founders of rise 25 where we help connect b2b business owners to their ideal prospects and first i want to give a shout out to scott anderson and double dare executive coaching i'll tell you about him in a little bit he's been really instrumental he's an amazing guy amazing entrepreneur and a coach and i'll tell you about him in a second but first before we get into that This episode is brought to you by Rise25 Media, where we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with done-for-you podcasts and content marketing. If you've ever been curious about starting a podcast and benefiting in the way that we have from having great conversations with great people in your industry, influencers, clients, referral partners, strategic partners, I have told people for the 11 years that I've done this that everyone should do it because even if you're not the next Joe Rogan, you don't need to be the next Joe Rogan. You can build an amazing amount of value for your life. So check us out at rise25media.com or email us at support at rise25media.com. All right, Dr. Weiss, let's dive into this. So the topic is for today, how to get exposure by getting a more podcast. And first, let's just start with a really broad question. But how do you do it? How do you get on more podcasts? How would you slice and dice this one? Yeah, so we'll we'll walk through. There's there's three things um, on this particular topic. One, you could do cold outreach, right? Two, you could hire someone else to do outreach, whether it's cold or warm. Maybe they know a bunch of people. Um, and three is having your own podcast. And we'll talk about how that can lead to being on more podcasts uh, itself. So we'll start off with the cold outreach piece. Yeah. You know, this is a whole different topic in itself, you know, and it kind of go lends itself to copywriting and direct response marketing. I think, you know, I've, I had, and I went on a stint of having some of the top copywriters and direct response marketers in the world on my podcast. I've interviewed over probably over 110 of of them and um so i I learned a thing or two and i studied their materials and um so cold outreach um what do you do when you are reaching out it's really about breaking through all the noise that's out there if you're reaching out to someone and you're pitching yourself i think what people don't realize is that once you've been doing a podcast for a little while you start really getting a lot of incoming solicitations from pr people from individuals from companies and so you really have to break break through, break you know, kind of stand out amongst all that noise. So how do you do it? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that stands out with cold outreach, and you'll you can verify this or not, John, because we get lots of emails, in, incoming emails for for our shows, is personalization. You know, if someone emails me something personal, and you can tell if someone looked at the show, they looked at the guest, they looked at me, they looked at LinkedIn. Sending something very personal cuts through the clutter. You know, at least someone put some effort into it. And, and when I send yeah. outreach to people, same thing. I look and 
try and connect on a personal level with them and look at maybe where they went to school, where their jobs were, anything, right? Yeah. So it, go ahead. And I have to say that people, there are a lot of people that do kind of a lazy version of this. And it it's, a, it's so formulaic. You can see it from a mile away. And it looks like this. I love your podcast. I particularly love that episode with insert most recent episode in the, like in the first line of the outreach message and then pivot to, I think this person would be a great guest on the podcast and they immediately move into, you know, their client and you can tell very, you know, very, very quickly that that's the real reason that they're contacting you. So how would you do that better? I mean, first, I'll give credit to those people. At least they're doing some personalization. So that's true. You know, which is better than than most. So even though I think I got one um, the other day, maybe it was last week. I can't remember, but that they they did do that, and I was like, it could have been formulae, it could not. But I'll give them credit for at least personalizing it, and right. uh, or at least pick an episode that's a little bit further into the archives, not just the most recent <laughs> one that was that was published. Yeah. I mean, what I would do is I would probably include that and I would just look actually at their LinkedIn profile and see something, connect with them and find something that stuck out. Because yeah. let's say most people just did exactly what you said, John. You don't want to do what most people are doing, which is just taking their podcast name and their recent episode. But most people are like, John, I saw you used to live in in Maryland you know, actually I went to Maryland and it snowed that, you know, something, I mean, yeah. it snowed that day and everything shut down. I'm from Chicago. So I'm like, what's going, what's wrong with people in Maryland, which actually happened. But, um, so something personal that's maybe not on their podcast page. I think uh, that's, itself. that's great advice. Yeah. And, and the other yeah. thing is from the cold outreaches, you know, finding why you as a guest relates to, to their show. And yeah. finally, like, I saw you've had these couple people actually, I could speak to this topic or, or something related to kind of pivoting into your story and why you're a fit for the show. Right. right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and you know, the savvy ones do that. They, they customize it. They make it unique or they listen to some, actually listen to some episodes and, uh, you know, have a way of connecting it. So that's option one. Option number two is hiring someone to do it for you. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know, it's funny because you and I probably make five to 30 introductions every single day. And, you know, you could hire someone. Um, and and you, when you're hiring someone, you're hiring them because they probably already have a, an amazing network of people that they can um, reach out to. And they already know, is this, they've already done the research on those shows. They already know if it's a fit or not. So, you know, I, we're a big, we're a big advocate for hiring for someone's skill set. And you're not just saying, oh, it took them only a day to get me on 10 podcasts, right? But really, it took them 10 years because they built up those relationships right. over a 10 year period. So, yeah, maybe they get quick results for you, but it took them a long time to build those relationships. And same thing with us when people, when we're introducing others to say, oh, like, we may get them on like a couple of shows that they want to get on. It's because we built relationships and we see there's a fit for that guest and with that show. So right. the really good podcast booking agencies have done a good job of that, thinking through where it's a fit and they're not going to recommend someone who's not a good fit. They're not doing spray and pray. Yeah. Approach, approach. It's their reputation yeah. in the end, because if yeah. they set you up with someone great, well, next time you email them or they email you, then they know, okay, this was great last time. It's going to be great again. So yeah. I think we're, you know, hire for the specialization that you need because it shortcuts. Yeah, it may cost you some money, but right. it shortcuts the process. and It's going to save you a lot of time. In right, the end. right. So that's option number one is cold outreach. Option number two is hiring someone to do it for you. Option number three is to have your own podcast. And why... Would that help yeah. you to get on other podcasts? Yeah. And, and people love, you know, John, we get this question a lot, which is, Jeremy, why would I have my own podcast? It's so much easier just to go on other shows. Like, I don't have to do any preparation. I just show up. They do that. You know, they then, you know, put it on all the platforms and everything like that. Why would I even bother to have my own show? It's a great question. What, what do you say to people? Who, a, I have a long answer to that. But the short version is when... Well, one, when you have your own show and you're interviewing others, you have an unlimited 
list of people who you can connect with, build a relationship with, network lit with. You're leveraging the principle of reciprocity because you're actually delivering value to them by giving them exposure, putting them on your show. Whereas if you're only connecting with people by being a guest on other shows, you're limited to the small universe of people who have a podcast in terms of your networking strategy, in terms of the people you're building relationships with. And, and it's also more in their the, hands. Yeah, you're yeah, you're exactly right. You're all limited to now your destiny is in their hands. Right. But I love both, truthfully. I love having my own podcast and I enjoy going on other shows as well. And the way that having your own podcast helps you get on other shows is you can reciprocate with one another, either a direct reciprocation or, you know, sometimes, you know, you might interview them and then see if it's a good fit for you to be a fit on their show. I was on one of the Shark Tank podcasts a while back, and the, that was the way that I did it. You know, I was on their show or I had the, the co-host on my show and then they reciprocated and had me on their show. Yeah. So I like when the when you have control of your destiny and you can, like you said, you have a. a you know, the whole pool of people that you can have on your show, but then you can also have uh, people in, you know, having another person who has a podcast is great too, because, you know, when they have lots of connections, right? When mm -hmm. someone comes on my show, I say, hey, um, I'm happy to introduce you to other people, right? And I, and you, you're the same way. Yeah. And we, you know, we have them on, they're kind of become, I consider them a friend when they come on and I'm happy to introduce them where it makes sense. Now yeah, we I, always do a double opt-in intro. So it's not, you know, imposing on someone else. We'll always ask them first, but it's podcasts have a great network of, of people they know. Yeah. And it's, there's also a shared camaraderie when I introduce two of my past guests to one another, because there, there's kind of a connection. I, I will often frequently give them the link to those episodes so that they can check it out. They can learn about one another before they hop on a call together. Um, all right. So that's great. So then let's also talk about how to be a good guest when you are on another show. And Jeremy, you spent years as a, a senior producer for one of the early groundbreaking successful business podcasts, helping prepare guests to be successful on that show. So talk a little bit about how to be a good guest. Yeah, so there's there's two ways to how to be a great guest, and it's during the show and after the show. So we'll talk about during the show for a second. And during the show, it's very simple, and, and you know this because of also yourself and your dad's work uh, in entertainment business, which is tell great stories, right? All good books, TV shows, movies, what we love about them is telling great stories, and that goes into thinking about, if you are going to be a guest on a podcast, think of some interesting stories that you can tell on that podcast and, and not really be general, but like real specific about that story, right? Because people remember that real specific moment. And so it also could be, I don't know if you, you want to go too controversial, but obviously, you know, something that's a little bit different thought to the, the normal. Um, and, and it's also in the hands of the of the interviewer as well, but make their job easier, right? Like when I had yes. Nolan Bushnell, like an example, you know, I did research on him. I don't know if he was going to, you know, come in and tell a bunch of, he was one of, you know, Steve Jobs' mentors, Nolan Bushnell, ba founder, the founder, of Atari. founder of Atari yeah. and Chuck E. Cheese. And Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. So obviously I did research. So I don't know if he would have mentioned this otherwise, but he was one of Steve Jobs' mentors. And in, in um, his book, which I listened to ahead of time, he talks about, how Steve Jobs offered him $50,000 for 33% of Apple, okay? And maybe he would have brought it up, maybe not, but I didn't want to leave it to, to chance. So I asked him, um, I know that he offered you 50,000 for 33%. Why did you say no to that? And so if he had that story in his arsenal, you know, if you have some like certain interesting stories, bring it up, you know, uh, anyways, yeah. and people want to listen to that. Like, Oh my God, that's crazy. Or so think about what you maybe go through a timeline of your journey and what has been kind of out of the ordinary crazy or what, what's a good story. Yeah. The other thing I want to say is that you want to really think about deliberately about what stories you want to tell because you can't possibly share every nuance about your life. You've lived a full life and you're multidimensional, but 
most people are going on a podcast because they have something to promote, a business, a personal brand, a company, something like that. So think about what's the narrative that you want to put out there because it's it's probably not the complete narrative. It's not every nuance about your entire life because some of them are, are just unrelated to that larger narrative. And, and so think about how those the stories that you do tell relate and reinforce the message and the purpose of why you're going on the podcast. I, I can't emphasize that enough because you hear people go on podcasts and they tell stories. You can you can go on and you can have diarrhea of the mouth and you can tell whatever stories, but it's it may not help to achieve the ultimate goal, the ultimate reason for doing it. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good point. <laughs> so, point. <laughs> um, and let's take the last piece. The last one we want to talk about is how to take it further. Okay, so we talked about how to actually get on on other podcasts. We talked about how to be a good guest. Now we're talking about how to take it further. What are some things that you should do after the interview, Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, taking it further also means being a great guest and also means, you know, continuing that relationship with the host, hopefully. And, you know, the things are, you know, John, what makes a great guest for you after the show? It means they share, they take it, they share it on LinkedIn, they share it on Facebook, they share it on their social channels, tag you in it so that you can share it. I mean, we are doing those things also, right? We're mm -hmm. taking it and we're posting about them, but when they're sharing it and tagging other people to watch it and see it, and then putting it in their, um, if they have uh, an email list, putting that in there and sending it out to their email list, hey, check it out. So, you know, it makes both of the energy and time of both those people go a lot further with putting it on social media and emailing out. And that, that goes a long way. I mean, I don't know, not every guest is going to do those things, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it, it is so appreciated when you work really hard uh, to create a podcast, to interview someone, to prepare beforehand when they're prepared. And then afterwards, they help you to promote it. They don't just leave it on your shoulders. And then also, you know, just like any thoughtful individual, you think about what else can, how else can you be helpful to that person? Are there certain types of introductions? Are there certain types of guests which be a good fit um, that they could introduce you to? I think about those sorts of things um, when I'm on. Um, and then taking it even further, how can you take that relationship further? If it's a fit, of course, you know, not everyone is expected to click with everyone else. But if you found a, a good connection with that person, are there ways in which you can collaborate? Are there synergies between your businesses? Are there ways in which, you know, once as we get back into a world of the living where we're interacting with one another in physical spaces again, you know, attending conferences and events and stuff like that, or traveling again, going to someone's city, can you meet up? Could you meet up and, you know, and organize a, a dinner or attend a dinner or go to the same conference? And then finally, just some whiz, advice and wisdom. Is there anything else specific that you can do advice or wisdom that you can provide for that person? That's another one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had guests, you've had guests that afterwards they were so gracious and I still remember those, those guests and they go, Oh, you know, here's, you know, nine people that I think maybe I, you know, that are in my network, that would be really good for your show. And it's yep. also a gift for them because then they can say to their friends, Hey, I met Jeremy. He's a super nice guy and his show was fun to, to go on and make an introduction there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and finally, of course, if you've been a guest on someone else's show and you haven't had that person, if you have your own show and you haven't had that person yet on your show, invite them to be a guest on your show. Or if you don't feel like it's a good fit, perhaps you introduce them to someone else, to another podcast where it would be a fit. And I think it's okay to say to people, to be honest, you know, you know, I don't know if it's the best fit for you to be on my podcast. However, I do appreciate you having me on mine, me on yours. And I'd like to introduce you to someone else where you can appear on this other podcast where it would be a fit. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, we're all focused on different things at different times and the types of companies and guests. So it may not be a fit now, but it may be a fit in the future. So, right. yeah. Final thoughts, that's... Jeremy, on how to get more exposure by appearing on other podcasts. 
No, I think I think we hit all the points. I mean, really, it is about giving to the other individual and it's about showing up um, the best you can for that show and just put yourself in their shoes. And if you were them, what, what do you want? You'd want someone to come on that right. was a fantastic storyteller and then also to promote it afterwards. Right, right. Final shout out for Scott Anderson and Double Dare Executive Coaching. Speaking of podcast guests, Scott and I first connected. He was a guest on my podcast and um, has shared lots of great wisdom with us. And if you're looking for an experienced executive coach who's been in the trenches as an entrepreneur, helping you to break through business plateaus, Scott Anderson and Double Dare Executive Coaching offer really a proven system for scaling your life, your business, he has 30 plus years experience as a proven entrepreneur, started over a half dozen companies, also has a master's degree in clinical counseling. I really don't know anyone who's got that quite that background of experience. Really amazing. Check out doubledareyou.us. That's doubledareyou.us. They've got a quick online assessment there and you can schedule a free business blueprint from Scott. And finally, Jeremy, where can people go learn more about us and Rise25? Yeah, they can go to rise25.com, check out more. There's a video there. We talk about podcasting and you could always email us if you have questions uh, about anything related to podcasting and you could check out more episodes of Smart Business Revolution. He's got some great archives and then Inspired Insider as well. And support at rise25media.com. That's the email. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Just you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand